Now it's tradition in wrestling that wrestlers push through injuries in order to finish a match and send the fans home happy. However, when some of the injuries that have occurred during WWE's top matches are analyzed, a ton of questions are asked as to just why the match was allowed to continue. Whilst it's courageous that the wrestler worked through these injuries, at the end of the day, their well-being should always be WWE's number one priority, and it's hard to argue against the argument that these 10 matches should have been brought to a definitive conclusion. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE matches that should have been stopped. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Number 10, Maven vs Christian. A broken leg is one of the worst injuries a pro wrestler can suffer, and when Maven suffered one in a match against Christian on SmackDown in 2002, WWE made the call to continue the matchup. Maven would discuss the match and injury on his acclaimed YouTube series, and this is what the former hardcore champion had to say. That makes me cringe. The move is called a baseball slide. Now, I played baseball for probably the better part of 17 years of my life, so the fact that I broke my leg on a baseball slide, that's God proving he has a sense of humor. When you mess an ankle up, what you're doing in essence, what's going to hurt you and that I still feel my ankle still swollen to this day. You're tearing up a ton of ligaments, a ton of tendons. The doctor said that the bone, both bone breaks, will heal in probably 6 to 10 weeks. That's not the issue. The ligaments and tendons of the ankle, depending on how much you tore those up, that's going to be the true injury and that's going to decide how long you're sidelined for. Maven went on to praise Christian for his efforts in the match as a wrestling veteran was constantly checking on him making sure he was okay. He's not putting any pressure on my neck there, but he's asking me, how hurt are you? Can you continue? Do we need to throw up an X? But I tell him I can finish. Knowing Vince McMahon is sitting back in Gorilla right behind the curtain, there's no way in hell I'm not going to finish this match. Number 9, Triple H and Stone Cold Steve Austin vs Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho. And Triple H has made a career out of working through injuries. In 2001, the game was arguably on the run of his career as he was in the midst of a top heel tag team with Stone Cold Steve Austin and the two would face the duo of Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho on Raw. During the match, which is widely regarded as one if not the greatest match in the history of Raw, the game tore his quad. Without question, the match should have been stopped or at least Triple H should have been taken away for medical attention. Of course, Triple H pushed through the injury and somehow, someway managed to finish the match as originally planned. A similar situation would occur in 2007 when the game tore his quad in a tag match and yet again the WWE legend continued wrestling without a hitch. Number 8. TLC4 now, Thanks to new research over the past decade in relation to concussions, WWE thankfully takes him seriously and if a wrestler is seriously concussed then they are pulled from in-ring action. During TLC4 in 2002, Bobber Ray Dudley suffered a serious concussion when he was bulldogged off a ladder by Chris Jericho. The concussion was so substantial that Bubba didn't have a clue where he was and Jericho had to literally talk him through each step of the match. If this type of situation occurred in modern day WWE, then Bubba would have been pulled out of the match with immediate effect. Thankfully, Jericho's professionalism and ability was on full display as without his guidance, Bubba could have seriously hurt himself. Number 7. Kurt Angle vs Shane McMahon Shane McMahon and Kurt Angle collided in one of the most brutal street fight matches imaginable at the 2001 King of the Ring event. The match was supposed to see Angle suplex McMahon through a panel of glass and this was intended to be sugar glass, but someone made a huge mistake and accidentally placed plexiglass in the panels. Due to this, McMahon was badly hurt and due to the horrors of what was unfolding, Vince McMahon himself was getting ready to cancel the match as he was utterly appalled in terms of what he was seeing. Number 6. The Undertaker vs Goldberg Heading into the Undertaker vs Goldberg match at Super Showdown 2019, there was obvious concern that the match was going to be less than stellar. Both men, despite being absolute legends, were way past their respective prime and for the match to work, it was going to need to be brief and to the point. Unfortunately, Goldberg reportedly knocked himself out during the match and the match fell apart. The moment that the referee realized that Goldberg was knocked out, the match should have been brought to a close, as what followed made for rather uncomfortable viewing. The match turned into a total botch fest and it was a miracle that both men came out of the match alive as it were dropped on their heads numerous times throughout the match. According to Goldberg on Twitter, even though he was knocked out, he believed he could finish the match. Knocked myself out and thought I could finish. Love my fans, but let you down. Everyone else that found pleasure, hope you're happy. Both men have spoken about their regrets when it comes to that match and thankfully WWE would learn the lesson as following the match they would only pair the two wrestlers with talents who were in a position to carry them through a passable and more importantly safe matchup. Number 5 Eddie Guerrero vs JBL 
In 2004, WWE presented one of the bloodiest matches in their history as Eddie Guerrero defended the WWE title against JBL at the Judgment Day pay-per-view. This was the infamous match in which Guerrero delivered one of the scariest blade jobs ever as he bladed too deep and, the process, and in the process he sliced a major artery. The bloodshed on display was like nothing seen before in WWE programming as it was everywhere. Although it was memorable, it was arguably too much and Guerrero was losing blood at a terrifying rate and he needed immediate medical assistance. Number 4. The Rock vs Kurt Angle vs Triple H The SummerSlam 2000 was main evented by a WWE title match between The Rock, Kurt Angle and Triple H. The match is infamous for a dreaded injury that occurred to Angle during the match and that should have brought Angle's involvement in the match to a definitive end. The injury occurred when Triple H performed a pedigree onto Angle through the announce table and the issue was that the table gave way, meaning that Angle's head hit the concrete. Angle was knocked senseless and despite WWE delivering a scripted spot where Angle would head to the backstage area, he somehow managed to come back out and finish the match. The head of WWE creative Triple H even admitted that none of this should have occurred during an interview on Logan Paul's podcast. Now this is where the story gets terrible because now we know about the concussions and everything else. None of this should have ever happened, but we didn't know this at the time. But you know, Kurt goes into the back. Rock and I are just working now. At some point, we're getting feedback from the back through the referee and finally it was Earl Hebner. I just tell Earl, Earl, do not tell me one thing. With a lot of expletives in here, they said from the back, I don't give a shit. I need one thing. Tell me if he's coming back, if he knows where he is. That's it. That's all I need to know and tell me when. We'll just keep going until someone tells me he can come out or he ain't coming out. I'll figure out a finish. Number 3. The Undertaker vs Mankind Every wrestling fan can recall the thrilling visual of Mankind being thrown off the Hell in a Cell by The Undertaker, but upon further inspection, it's clear that the match should have ended right there. The bump itself is so famous that if WWE stopped the match right there due to legitimate safety concerns for Mankind, it's likely that WWE would avoid the backlash. If the match had stopped, then Mankind would have avoided one of the scariest and unscripted spots in company history. When Taker chokeslammed Mankind through the cell, the roof was never supposed to give in, and according to Mankind, the bump was so dangerous that he could have died. Number 2. Survivor Series 2002 Elimination Chamber The 2002 Survivor Series featured the first ever Elimination Chamber, and Triple H suffered a major injury in the match that led him to being rushed to hospital. One of the most famous spots in the match saw Rob Van Dam perform a 5-star frog splash from the top of the chamber pod onto Triple H. The move unfortunately didn't go to plan as RVD Shin came across the game's throat. The way Triple H sold a move wasn't a case of him acting, that was legitimate, genuine pain that the game was in. According to Triple H, he was struggling to breathe and there was concern that he could have died in the matchup. The match should have come to a close that the game could be checked over, and WWE with the talents in the match could have easily come up with a brand new improvised finish. And number 1. Brock Lesnar vs The Undertaker when WWE arrived at WrestleMania 30, it was an exception that The Undertaker would have an all-time classic at WrestleMania. However, at that WrestleMania, Father Time began to catch up with the dead man. Early on in the match with Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker suffered a concussion and this wasn't obvious from initial viewing, as it looked like the dead man was selling, but the concussion was severe. During an appearance on Broken Skull Sessions, the dead man discussed just how serious the concussion was. Somewhere within the first 5 minutes, I get concussed. I don't even remember this night. I watch it back now and obviously no. My last memory that I can definitively tell you happened at about 3.30 in the afternoon when my wife came backstage and we had a conversation. That's the last thing I remember on my show about that day. At this point in my career, there's a huge process of me getting ready between the stretching, visiting the doctors, doing everything I need to get myself ready to perform. An hour and a half, 2 hour process that's completely gone. My memory picks up 4.35 in the morning when I'm in hospital. Whilst The Undertaker's injury in the match did lead to questions relating why WWE didn't stop the match, it later surfaced that when the dead man appeared on the Joe Rogan experience, that he went into the match with a broken neck, meaning that if WWE delivered effective medical testing on the dead man, then he wouldn't have been cleared for the match. They, the doctors, take me back. My wife Michelle McCool and Vince McMahon are there in the waiting room. They come out, it's the same kind of deal. The doctors go, alright he's broken his neck and we're gonna give him another scan. Obviously my wife is completely freaking out at this point. We come to find out they had read the scans wrong. It was an old break that I never knew I had. I never knew it. I never knew it. Well, there you have it folks, 10 WWE matches that should have been stopped. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.